Hey crafty fam, it's Alex Vanover and welcome back to my craft room. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Cricut's infusible ink on a sequin pillow cover. Now my sequin pillow cover is from the DIY Alex summer party mystery box, but if you didn't get a box, don't worry. I've linked a very similar sequin pillow cover down in the description below, as well as all of my materials. So let's get started. So to begin with our infusible ink project, first we need to choose an image. Within the Cricut Access Library, there are tons of images already. So if you go to the images um, button and then browse all images, you can actually filter the materials by infusible ink, which will give you a bunch of images that work really well with infusible ink. You can also search for more specific terms here at the top. I'm going to be using an external SVG file and you're welcome to do that as well. So I already have it uploaded, but it was one of my most recent images. So I'm just going to click the upload button and then choose the summer state of mind image right here. Then I'll click insert images. And since I want this to cut on all one sheet of infusible ink, I'm going to attach the entire thing. If you want to break this into multiple sheets, you can certainly do that and that will work just fine. I just want to keep it simple for this project. Next, I need to size it for my infusible ink sheets. So I'm going to use the um, manual width and height here at the top of the screen. And I'm going to type in 11 and a half inches because that way I can make sure I can fit it all on my infusible ink sheet. And that is going to work perfectly. So once you have everything attached and sorted the way that you like it, next you can click the green make it button. I'm going to be using my Cricut Maker 3 for this project, so I'm going to choose on a mat. If you have the Explore Air 2 or the regular Maker, it's not going to ask you that question, so you don't need to worry about it. Then once that's chosen, I am going to mirror my design. Working with infusible ink is a lot like working with HTV or iron-on, so you always wanna be sure to mirror it. Then I'm going to click Continue. And once your machine connects, we can just choose the infusible ink transfer sheet setting. You may have to browse all materials if you've never cut that before, but I have never had any issues cutting this on just the regular infusible ink setting. So let's hop over to my Cricut machine and I'll show you how to cut your infusible ink. So for this project, I'm going to be using the rainbow triangles pattern of Cricut infusible ink. So when you get your infusible ink, it will originally be in this like black packaging all the way around the ink. And I don't hang on to this once I open up my package, but I do store my ink within my box so that it doesn't get exposed to too much light. And before I start handling my infusible ink, it's also important to note that I do have clean, dry hands, which basically just means I haven't put on any lotion recently or anything like that, because if you touch your infusible ink too much with your hands and you have something greasy on them, that can mess it up a little bit. So one interesting feature about the Cricut Maker 3 is that it does measure your mat. So even though this project doesn't actually exceed 12 inches, since Design Space says I need a 12 by 24 inch mat, I do actually have to use one on this project. So I'm going to remove my cover sheet from my 12 by 24 mat. And then I'll add my infusible ink in the upper left hand corner, which is down on this side right now. And you want to be sure to place your ink with the pretty side up, transfer sheet side down. Similar to iron on, we are actually cutting into the infusible ink, which is why it's mirrored because the transfer sheet is on the front side of infusible ink. So once it's well stuck down, I'll open up my Cricut Maker 3 and insert it into my machine. Then when the middle button flashes, I'll press go. And 
once the cut is done, I'll press the flashing unload button. And next we'll weed our infusible ink. So while I'm weeding my infusible ink, I'm also going to set my Cricut Easy Press for the settings I need for this project. And I got these settings from the Cricut Heat Guide. I will link that in the description of the video for you guys. You can insert what kind of material you're material you're using with your easy press and all of that stuff and it will get you the exact settings that you need. So for the temperature, I'm going to turn it up to 385 degrees. And then for the time, I'm going to increase it to 60 seconds. So we'll set this aside while it heats. One tip that I've learned for weeding infusible ink is to actually roll it backwards and to actually let some of these edges crack because it's a little bit easier to pull the areas out after you do that. So I'm mostly going to be removing the background of this design. So I'm just going to use my pin pen or whatever weeding tool you have to get the corner started. And then I will probably do the rest of the weeding with my hands. There we go. So now that my design is weeded, I should be able to flip it over and it should look correct. And it does. So I'm going to set it aside while we get our sequin pillowcase ready. I'm also going to be moving my self healing mat out of the way because I don't want to burn the surface of it or heat it too much while my easy press is heating for such a long time. But I am going to put down a kitchen towel underneath my easy press mat. That way, in case my table gets a little bit too hot, this towel can act as a buffer. So I have a 12 inch by 12 inch easy press mat, and I really like having a larger easy press mat than my easy press because I just feel a lot better with putting it on my table and things like that because my heat, my easy press is only nine by nine. So next it's time to lay out your sequin pillowcase and the key to sublimating or using infusible ink on these pillowcases is to make sure that all of your white sequins are turned in the same direction when you go to sublimate on them. So there are a few here at the top that don't want to turn, but that's okay because they're going to be out of the way anyway. So as you can see, everything is turned in the correct direction. Then I'm going to use the lint-free cloth that I got with my infusible ink, and I am going to wipe it down just in case there's any residue left over on the sequins. Okay. So now it's time to tape my design into place. So you need to stick your infusible ink with the ink side down on the surface like this. Then I'm going to be using Cricut brand heat tape. You can use any heat tape that you have, and we do need to tape it into place to make sure that it doesn't move while we are pressing it. Then I'll use my heat tape and tape the sides down. Now what's going to be tricky about this project is that my easy press is actually smaller than my design, which means I'm going to have to break my design up into sections and press in different sections, which is something I've never done before. So I'm not sure how these results are going to go, but since I know this will be the situation for many of you, I wanted to try it in a video and show you what to do in case you encountered the same thing. 
So I'm also going to use the butcher paper that came with the um, infusible ink. I'm just going to use one sheet of it. And I'm going to place the textured side down on the infusible ink. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to press this in four sections because my design is about 11 and a half wide by 11 and a half high. And my easy press is only nine by nine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the top section on the left and then the right and then the bottom section on the left and on the right. And that way I have four small presses. Now, obviously my butcher paper is not going to stay in place. So I guess I'll be taping that down as well just to make sure that we have as little movement as possible. So we'll start with the upper left section. Then I'll move my easy press to the right hand side and do another 60 seconds. Now I'm gonna put my easy press back in the base while I shift it around and make sure that the bottom of my design has plenty of room on the easy press mat. Another suggestion to make this project a little bit easier is if you do own a heat press that's larger than the design, it would be much easier to just press the whole thing at once, of course. And I didn't mention this before, but the Cricut Heat Guide told me that I only needed light pressure. So when I'm sitting with my Easy Press or with my hands on the Easy Press, I'm not really adding any pressure because the weight of the Easy Press is sufficient for light pressure. So now I can feel that both sides, along the sides and along the bottom, are on the Cricut Easy Press mat. So now I'm going to press the left section and then the right. Infusible ink in this case is a warm peel, so I'll give everything a moment to cool down before I peel off my design. All right, now that our design has cooled down, let's see how it worked pressing in four different sections. you can see it on the camera but this infusible ink is so bright and it's so beautiful and we have a little bit of fading around some of the seams of our press there's a little bit of fading here at the top of the N and around this T and I'm sure that's probably where I didn't overlap my easy press as much as I could have but y'all this is amazing this is a great alternative if you don't have a sublimation printer or you don't want to sublimate using Cricut infusible ink on sublimation blanks including on on the sequin pillow are an amazing compromise because this stuff looks great. If you decide to make anything using my tutorials, whether it's an infusible ink pillow cover or something else, and you decide to share it on Instagram, be sure to use the hashtag DIYAlex because I love seeing what you guys are crafting. And if you've made it this far in the video, then I really want to get to know you on social media. So please search for me at DIY Alex Vanover on pretty much all major social media platforms. And I'll be sure to put direct links to my profiles down in the description below. 
If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more just like it, then be sure to subscribe to the DIY Alex YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell so that you get notified every single time that I put out a new video every single week. But don't wait for next week's video. Be sure to check out this one next. Or if you want to make your DIY dreams come true, be sure to check out this video. I know that you're going to love it.